all right guys wes here welcome back to the channel and it is official zelda tears of the kingdom gameplay has been previewed so we have a ton of stuff to talk about in this video we're going to do a full analysis of all of the gameplay we have new gameplay features and combat mechanics to talk about a mysterious new ability that was revealed as well as confirmed locations for zelda tears of the kingdom these previews do not contain any story spoilers so you guys are good to watch this video and a huge thank you to all of the youtube creators and industry insiders that flew out and got us this gameplay so check the link in the description if you guys would like to watch their videos as well on screen credit it seems like that the general consensus after watching all of the footage it sounded like that zelda tears of the kingdom is a worthy successor as we all expected and it truly is that generational leap for the zelda franchise as well as the entire gaming industry real quick guys do you want to win a zelda tears of the kingdom switch oled well i am giving one away on my twitch channel all you have to do to enter is follow my twitch and then tune into my 700 hour zelda marathon starting on may 1st and if you want a bonus entry to the giveaway all you have to do is join my discord and then send a screenshot that you're following my twitch page in the zelda oled giveaway channel best of luck and without further delay let's go ahead and dive into all of the brand new gameplay for zelda tears of the kingdom now as i get started with this in-depth analysis i'll be separating this video out into multiple sections the first part will be covering the great sky island as well as its various archipelagos so feel free to check the video chapters to optimize your experience starting things off we have link diving down above one of these sky islands and he's diving into a small pool of water this is also the same diving animation we've seen before he slightly submerges under the water similar to breath of the wilds and the other footage we've seen with a similar splash animation as well now this next shot is very similar to the one we just saw but this one has link diving down and then pulling out his bow to go into bullet time while he is in a fully horizontal free fall down to the surface of this sky island now the biggest thing to take note of is as link draw back his arrow to start bullet time but instead of releasing the arrow to chunk the stamina bar link canceled the bow animation and it gave him the stamina back which had then stopped the bullet time and then link used his face to break the fall in this scene we have link that grabbed a golden apple from a tree which according to the description is a rare item that is sometimes found near normal apples as we move forward link pulls out a one-time use sony device that is a portable cooking pot now for this screenshot right here we have the brand new menu for tears of the kingdom that looks very similar to the previous game's menu now we're not going to dive too much into this but we'll point out the biggest things so the l and r buttons are how you move in between the menus which is different than using the analog sticks for the first tab we have clothing and then we have the bow and arrows the shield tab the weapons tab the materials tab the cooked items tab and then that circular thing is actually one of those zonai balls which contains the zonai devices there's the key items menu and of course the settings menu we see a fire fruit that they added which generates heat when struck and it also has a buff that raises the attack power in high temperature areas the awesome jingle that happens whenever you cook things is still there as well which i think is a nice touch and i'm glad they kept it into the game i believe on the tree in this scene right here you could see another golden apple as well so maybe the golden apples have a higher chance of spawning on the sky islands link then walks forward a little bit and finds a stamp bulb which has the enduring effect that will increase Link's stamina when cooked with different items now for this scene we have link on top of the sky islands with a contraption with two fans and a rocket with one of those stone gliders that we've seen throughout the trailers i thought this might have been an ability late game but it looks like these are just items found throughout these sky islands and possibly the surface we see the two fans on the right as well as the rocket ship in the middle which gives him a giant boost and allows him to glide to the other island in front of him in epic fashion he then glides down to one of the islands and this is the location of one of these sky shrines in this shot we have link using master hand to solve this puzzle that is in the sky is it called the sky shrine is it called a sky trial the verdict is still out now one thing that i'd like to note right here is if you look at the very bottom it says vertical rotation and horizontal rotation using the d-pad up and down and left and right now the first time i saw this i was like here we go again with the motion controls but it looks like this is being done with the directional pads likely getting the player adapted to rotating things with the x and y axis whenever they start using ultra hand and building their contraptions now in this next shot we have link performing a puzzle with ultra hand so that he can access a chest that's in the water he pulls up this stone slab and the water falls out which then allows him to go into the water and grab one of these chests and i saw this puzzle done so many times throughout the various gameplays we saw so the freedom of choice to complete the puzzles is definitely real link used ultra hand to pull up the stone slab it then fell back down and then he used recall to pull it back up and freeze it in time which allowed him to grab the chest with ease now for this section we have link using the new ability ascend which one thing that i'd like to note is there's kind of like a delay in between using the ascend ability as well as exiting the ascend maybe we eventually get to upgrade ascend like let's say ascend plus that allows us to descend now right here we see link pick up a new item called a sundalion which the description says it's a wild plant that grows in the sun at high altitudes soaked in sunlight its petals can restore health 
depleted by gloom when used in cooking. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen the word gloom used. We've seen it on Nintendo's website. What does gloom mean? Well, gloomy means dark or poorly lit. So that tells me that whenever we go down in one of those caves, possibly the caves that have enemy camps, we have to keep the area well lit or we will get the status effect gloom, which we then use one of these sundalions to remove the status effect. There's been a lot of question on whether or not gloom is going to replace malice. I don't think that's the case. I think malice is still going to be in the game, but gloom is specifically for areas that are pitch black or just poorly lit. Moving on to this shot, we have Link once again going into bullet time. This time he actually shoots one of the arrows, which as I noted before, is actually the thing that depletes the stamina wheel in bullet time. And moving further, we have another item in the game called a dazzle fruit, which as the description says, if you break it, it will unleash dazzling sparkles that blind any monsters nearby. So this is basically a flashbang. Moving forward a couple frames, we have a construct that is shooting an arrow at you that has a rocket fuse to it. Now for here, we have Link going into the recall state and he's using recall to get one of those stone gliders that is currently stuck up on top of a tree so he could then use the glider again. He probably could have used ultra hand, but it's so cool that this will work as well. Now the rock at the very bottom left, I didn't really want to talk about too much, but it just basically has a laser beam. Moving right along, we have one of these gumball machines that is basically just a gacha machine that whenever you place Zonai charges inside of one of these, it will then output a bunch of Zonai devices. So here's hoping we all get some God rolls. You could also consume these Zonai charges that will increase the battery level that you have on Link's green vials. Those are actually just batteries as we thought. Now for this part of the gameplay, we have another scene of Link cooking things from the one-time use Zonai cooking pot. And then you see the player go to the cooked items menu, which revealed the recipe menu. So yes, Link now has recipes. So no more having to Google recipes. Maybe there's some recipe books in the game that when you learn the recipes, they will stay in that menu. Moving right along, we have Link using a red choo choo jelly and he's throwing that into this pile of leaves. That confirms two things. There are random puzzles throughout the world and yes, Koroks will be returning. Let's just hope there's not gonna be 900 of them. And if there is, we better not get Hetsu's poop again. Moving on to this shot of the gameplay, we have a chest that contains an old map. This tells me that treasure hunting will be present in Tears of the Kingdom and that gets me so excited. Now we get to this shot of the gameplay where Link grabs fire fruits off of the trees that are on top of the Sky Islands. And then we see another one of those contraptions. This one is a little bit more complex as it's got two rockets with these stone gliders that are double layered. For this shot, we have one of those Zonai cubes that actually stays floating into the sky. So whatever you attach to this Zonai cube, it will stay floating. Obviously, if you put a rocket pointing down, it will start going to the surface. If you attach a hot air balloon, then it will start to rise up. And another thing to note, this object can also be recalled. Now in this shot, we have another one of those puzzles. This time we get to see what's in the chest and it is a magic rod. So you fuse one of the gems, a sapphire, a ruby, or a topaz, and that's how you get the elemental rods that were in Breath of the Wild. Moving on to this scene, we have Link using a rusty broadsword to try to chop down a tree. And it looks like the effectiveness of the chops are a lot less powerful than Breath of the Wild, and I'm sure they take more durability. So it's probably a good idea to have a makeshift ax or a hatchet on hand. So now that we're in kind of the spoilery segment of the Sky Island section of this video, I'd like to talk about all of the locations that we know that are in the sky. So first and foremost, we have the Great Sky Island. Now, this is, of course, the tutorial area. And according to everybody that's previewed the game, the size is about the same as the Great Plateau that we had from Breath of the Wild. And on top of the Great Sky Island, we finally have a name for the big structure, which that is now confirmed to be the Temple of Time. So it's very curious that we have two Temple of Times in this game. We have the one on the surface of Hyrule, and we have another that's in the sky. The fact we have two different Temples of Time tells me that the theories surrounding time travel in Tears of the Kingdom are seemingly correct. Now, if we take a look at the shot to the left, you see that there is a bunch of islands, and this location is called the South Hyrule Sky Archipelago. Now, if we look at this screenshot right here, this user on Reddit, Mr. JCBA, created the map of the Great Sky Island. Now, if you remember from all of the gameplay trailer that we saw from Mr. Aonuma, we have that big lake to the left. At the very bottom of the screenshot, we have a big structure or mountain that Link was standing on on top of the Great Sky Island that was looking directly at the Temple of Time. So now let's go ahead and get into the in-depth analysis of the gameplay from the surface of Hyrule. Jumping right into it, we have Link using the material menu to attach a piece of raw meat to the end of one of his arrows, which attracts the Moblin to the meat, similar to how the Mighty Bananas attracted the members of the Yiga Clan. Now, if it wasn't already evident from the previous gameplay, we are only able to fuse two things together. So the dream of being able to create a super long stick and fuse 10 sticks together are over. So now if we take a look at the location we're at right now, we're at one of the new Sheikah Towers that is located right near Lake Kolomo and the Kolomo Ruins. We have the Bokai 
goblins that created a trap for Link. You saw that they broke that piece of wood that then sent the spike ball plummeting down to the explosive barrels to try to pull a fast one on Link. Well, lucky for us, we have the recall ability that allows us to pause time and send the spike ball back over to the Boat Goblins. Now, one big aspect that I'd like to note is in this game, instead of having the left and right sliders for all of the different abilities, we have a radial menu. This is similar to the radial menu that we saw in Skyward Sword, but we have one thing that's missing on the radial menu, as well as a new ability that we've never seen before, which the bottom right ability is called auto build. It essentially streamlines the process of rebuilding your contraptions that you've previously already built. So instead of having to rebuild every single contraption that you've previously made, this allows you to just really quickly remake it. Think of the auto build being just a blueprint. And I'm guessing this feature is just limited to one auto build blueprint at a time, but it'd be cool to have two or three that you could select from. With the auto build icon having three hands, it would make sense to me that you could have at least three saved. Continuing on to Link using the recall ability, he sends the big spike ball back up to the enemies, and then he fused a red choo-choo jelly to the end of his arrow to have a flame arrow that then exploded the explosive barrels. Moving on, we have a shot of the weapons menu. And as I successfully predicted, in this menu, if you actually select the option, you could destroy the fused material. So the material that is fused to your current weapon, you could destroy that fused material so that then you could add another item to the top of your fuse. Also, can we just respect the name Sturdy Stick Stick? Link then closes the menu and then he fuses a blue book goblin horn to the end of his wooden stick, which then gives him a plus seven attack power. For this shot, we have a contraption that was created with what looks to be a wooden wall, a wooden door, a hot air balloon with a Zonai fire emitter in the middle, which isn't the best creation, but hey, it works. Now in this scene, we are inside of the big Bokoblin camp. We have the boss Bokoblin in the very back. It's a blue variant, and he has a wooden club with one of those big metal spike balls fused to the end of the club. And he's also throwing stones. The player then tries to recall the stone back to no avail, but they were able to manage to get one of those pebbles and throw it back at this Bokoblin. Now this next shot, we see the menu of the bows and arrows tab. We have the traveler's bow that's making a return as well as a construct bow and a old wooden bow the next tab we have the armor tab that we get to see which confirms the name of the brand new tunic and leg wear we have the archaic tunic and the archaic leg wear this next shot we have the map again and then if you look at the bottom d-pad you can actually select from the sky as well as the surface looking at the surface tab we are right next to lake colomo as i said we've got the coliseum to the left the forest of time at the very bottom on top of the great plateau you have the malice infected area with a hole in the ground that hole in the ground likely takes you to a cave with an enemy camp and then as you can see right here on the screen we have confirmation of two things we have the name of the towers they're not Sheikah towers they're skyview towers now granted they are built with Sheikah technology but more on the skyview towers in just a bit in this shot we have link once again inside of the bokoblin camp with the boss bokoblin unfortunately the player died before so they're trying to attack the boss bokoblin one more time as you can see at the bottom left of the screen link then confirms the location again which is of course the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower. And then if we pause right here, we can see that these are indeed Sheikah Towers, but they're called Skyview Towers in this game. You can see the Sheikah Eye at the very top left. You have the Sheikah Pedestal. And then we have the platform that is right in the middle of this tower. Well, it just so happens that rather than having to fast travel everywhere, you could actually utilize these towers for movement as well, as the platform in the middle will essentially shoot you all the way up into the sky, allowing you to then fly to any location that you choose. Now, I don't know if these Skyview Towers allow you to get all the way up to one of the Sky Islands. But what we do know is they will allow you to travel throughout the world faster. So for those of you that decide to play the game without doing any fast travel, these Skyview Towers will be a great resource to you. Now, if we take a look at this frame right here in the materials menu, it's officially confirmed that bomb flowers are back into the game. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to wind bomb with them. But regardless, I love seeing items from previous Zelda games make a return in Tears of the Kingdom. Next up, we have confirmation of yet another combat mechanic, and that is the ability to throw materials you pull out your material menu and then it says select material to throw it then hot swaps the weapon that you have selected to the item that you selected to throw and then you just toss it at the enemy moving right along to this shot we have link that is fusing a muddle bud to the end of his arrow and that basically confuses the enemy and makes them start attacking each other now for this scene we have link that fused a bomb flower to the end of a spear and it of course exploded everything and anything around moving right along to this shot we have link going up against the moblin that we saw before but this time we got confirmation in this shot that sneak strikes are back in the game i know a lot of people said that sneak striking was op same with flurry rushing but hey they're back moving on to this shot inside of the bokoblin camp the boss bokoblin has been killed and the spoils are as expected we have the boss bokoblin fang the boss 
crossbow goblin horn and so on and so forth now for this shot we have confirmation that the sheikah slate has returned we saw it in the previous trailers but this time it's got kind of the oled look to it the way to mark locations throughout the game world by pinning things is still in the game and you can even pin things to the top of sky islands which i think is a good touch here we have link that fused a keys wing to the very end of an arrow and this basically increases the fire distance of the arrow and it looks like the speed was increased as well here we have link fusing a topaz at the end of an arrow that gives a big aoe effect of lightning so like the yellow choo choo jelly that only does a small area of effect the topaz gives a big aoe so now let's go ahead and get into the spoiler section of the surface of hyrule in tears of the kingdom well first and foremost we have a screenshot that i don't think i'm going to post on the screen maybe i will it was from one of the previews but as you see we have lookout landing in central hyrule and then we have west castle town and east castle town which looks like it has been restored which is really cool we have the hyrule castle moat also if you take a look at the map screenshot you see the three question marks which my guess that means the compendium will be added back to the game but it could be something else we have character profiles adventure log map and album the last thing that we have to talk about regarding the surface of hyrule is if you look at this shot right here link walks over to the sign with a foundation and it says this hyrule restoration materials use this materials cache for all of your building needs come find us if you'd like a dream home signed hudson construction so as i predicted in my previous video rebuilding hyrule is going to be real and base building could be a possibility now this could be just a storytelling reason for them to place materials throughout the game world but why would they say contact me if you want to build your dream home well in my opinion i think base building is in the game but we will just have to wait and see now let's go ahead and dive into some of the things that i noticed from all of the gameplay previews that i watched in no particular order well first and foremost let's talk about the elephant in the room the game is running at 30 fps throughout all of the gameplay and it will likely target the same resolution as breath of the wild did most likely 720p there was some footage that had pretty bad frame droppage which obviously is cause for concern the nintendo switch is six years old but according to the creators that actually flew out and played the game this was different from their experience so it could be that the footage that they got from nintendo for some of the b-roll was from an earlier build of the game the next thing that i'd like to talk about is from a tweet from gene park and they said that dungeons are returning in tears of the kingdom they walked over to an area that looked like a dungeon it was an entrance to a room they opened it but they weren't allowed to go inside but gene said that this area was nothing like that he's seen before i believe he was on top of a sky island so my guess is he was not at the entrance of a dungeon but rather a sky shrine or a sky trial another thing to note is that ultra hand is not just for building contraptions it's basically an overpowered version of magnesis that you could use for anything in the game there's multiple different types of consumable batteries in the world that you can use for your contraptions one thing that i would love to see personally is a late game zoni generator that auto replenishes the zoni batteries maybe you have a wind turbine with a wind generator that creates the zoni energy that allows you to replenish the batteries obviously i'd want that in late game but either way it's pretty awesome another thing that i want to note is according to all of the preview players there was no new swimming mechanics now this is obviously unfortunate but it could be that they're just early in the game and they're not able to do any of the new swimming mechanics maybe in this game you have to have the zora gear on in order to have the swimming ability or if it's anything like skyward sword you have to have the water dragon scale in order to go under the water now this would make sense especially whenever you consider how relevant dragons are to tears of the kingdom next up it's also worth noting that now that koroks are back the inventory slots will also be limited as well so get ready for an epic adventure hunting for every korok in the game well guys that is going to wrap it up with this video let me know what your thoughts are on tears of the kingdom in the comment section below do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel with your notifications turned on and if you guys would like to win a zelda switch oled all you have to do is follow my twitch channel the link is in the description and then tune into my 700 hour zelda live stream that is starting on may 1st i will have the details in the pinned comment as well as a bonus entry where if you submit proof in my discord that you're following my twitch page then it will give you another chance to win the giveaway thank you all for watching guys this has been wes and i'll talk to you in the next video